pretty disgusting. Isn't that sad? Yeah. I wonder if it's natural causes or, you know, where people have been shooting them? Shooting? You remember a few years ago somebody was shooting them? Last time aboard Freedom, Sean and I started decorating our tiny floating home for the holidays before cruising north to the San Juan Islands. On our cruise up, we took in some amazing Pacific Northwest sights before enjoying a few days at anchor in a hidden gem where we had the whole place to ourselves. Miss Martha even gained a new skill, using the pea patch. So after enjoying island life for the week, we're back in Seattle to put the final touches on our holiday decor. On a scale of one to 10, how excited are you to bring back your buddy from last year? Oh, that'd be a one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you I wanted, thought, you wanted me to wait. Kind of no, this will be the last, how about, okay, last winter. Yeah. Um, but you wanted me to wait because you wanted to be a part of this excitement. <laughs> right. And now you're poopy. Well, I, you nope, know, take that poopy attitude. Not poopy, just not overly joyed. <laughs> take the poopy attitude. And you've added to him this year. Don't. I have more. Yeah. Like, the flying sand is going to be epic. You know, last year didn't go so well, and then you add stuff. Oof. But I figured if you're a part of it, you won't be a crab ass. Okay, it's that time of year again. It is time to bust out the most popular green dinosaur from 2020, Dino. And this year, um, as promised from last year, I was able to find a friend for him. Um, I had a vision of a Santa flying off the boat, and I found the closest thing that I could find to that. Um, thank you, Amazon. So we are gonna decorate the boat today. Um, we are so behind, we're like a month behind in this because the weather here in Seattle has been absolutely atrocious. These all day rains, horrible wind. So we're very behind. I almost didn't do this. I was like, ugh, the weather just sucks. Why bother? It's such a waste of time, Blah. And I pulled that sour puss attitude right off the floor got rid of it and uh, we are going to leave the dock today. We're actually gonna go to Bell Harbor, which is right in downtown Seattle um, and decorate the boat and spend the weekend. So it's a little bit of a staycation. Um, we haven't been to Seattle in a year. Um, and since this is our final winter, our final Christmas here in the Seattle area, we figured why not just go to Bell Harbor for a weekend, um, decorate the boat, check out Pike Market, check out downtown, see what's new and uh, give, I guess, the passers-by something to smile at. Uh, Dino and his new flying Santa. So, let's move. Uh, we're gonna take the trash out, take the dogs out, and then uh, head over just like three miles to Bell Harbor. It's about three miles? Oh, never mind, 6.75. So close yet so far. Oh well, okay. Trash time. Off we go on our quick 6.75 mile trip to Bell Harbor Marina, located in Elliott Bay, which is just south of our home port here in Shulshul Bay. The wind picked up out of the north, giving us some nice toilet bowl chop as we left our marina. For a split second, we envied this beautiful, fast-moving vessel plowing right through these waves.
but conditions improved once we made it around Discovery Point into Elliott Bay towards Seattle. Seattle is one of our favorite cities, and it's especially beautiful to see from the water. From the iconic Space Needle, to the Sculpture Park, to all the beautiful buildings, to Smith Tower, which was one of the city's tallest buildings, to the Big Wheel, Seahawk Stadium, and the bustling port, there's no shortage of eye candy. And wow, does the city look big these days. We arrived at Bell Harbor Marina, where we'll be staycationing for the weekend. And we snagged a fantastic end slip, perfect for debuting freedom for the holidays. Sean, did you think you'd be coming to Bell Harbor to wash the boat? No, no we can't put decorations on a dirty boat. You got issues, buddy. Huh? You got issues. What do you mean? Um, anyways, I'm going to go settle up and get you your bathroom code. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> all right, we're all checked in. Burr, it's cold. That was a nice ride over, a little lumpy. Um, it's almost four o'clock and it's getting darker and darker, earlier and earlier. So I hope once Sean's done cleaning the boat, like, I know, you guys know already, he's got issues with cleaning the boat. Um, we got a lot of bow spray, so he doesn't want to put decorations on the boat um, with salt. Understandable. Um, so hopefully he's in a good mood to put up some decorations. I'm thinking we might just get the inflatables up tonight and maybe do the lights tomorrow. I don't know. I'm already feeling not into it. Uh, oh well. But man, it's good to be here. The city's beautiful. It looks good. All right, let's just do it all. We can't half-ass Christmas. We either put it all up or we put none of it up. I vote for none. You want it all. Happy wife. <laughs> happy, happy wife. wife. Happy life. That's the spirit. But if those Velcro straps are still under the bed, I don't think I can dig those out. Then we'll wait. We just got done washing the sheets and made the bed. So if the straps aren't out, I don't think they're out. So then we do just do Dino. Well, and the Flying Santa. <clears throat> we'll see. You heard the man, we can't half-ass Christmas, so carpe diem, baby. Let's get those Velcro straps and get this boat ready for the holidays. First up were the bow lights, secured via Velcro straps, and the man, the myth, the legend, Dino. Looking good, bud. I don't know. You look like you lost weight over the, over the summer. I better win. Husband of the year for the award <laughs> for this year. Next up was the inflatable flying Santa and Rudolph. This didn't look exactly like the picture on Amazon, but beggars can't be choosers this time of year, so we just went with it. We had to strategize a bit on how exactly we were going to tackle this, but Sean's handiwork always pays off, so we were able to easily secure the big guy down and hoist him up with the boom. And just like Jeffrey Epstein, these lights don't hang themselves, so Sean got to work stringing the last of them up and around the mast so we could call it a night.
As forecasted, the next day was cold and wet. Perfect for coffee in a boat project. My favorite way to kick off a Saturday. Hi. Good morning, sunshine. Good morning. What's on your agenda today before the market? Well, since it's raining, I'm going to tackle a boat project this morning. There's never a shortage of those. Um, our generator developed a little bit of a leak on the fuel injector pump assembly. Um, so I'm going to replace that as well as our fuel lift pump on the generator. Um, I haven't done a fuel injection pump swap before, but I have some uh, good instructions that were given to me uh, thanks to Lugger Bob. Lugger Bob runs uh, all of the dealer and owner training for Northern Lights for Alaska Diesel for lugger engines. Um, so I think with the step-by-step -step instructions, I should be in good shape. So I'm going to tackle that project. Don't know how long it'll take. Um, guessing two or three hours. Times uh, two or times 1.5? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. And then uh, my goal is to take the old uh, fuel injection pump and send it to a place in Seattle, have it rebuilt, and we'll have that as a spare should we ever develop a leak again. So there's a place that rebuilt? Yep. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Is that expensive? Uh, no idea. I think they, uh, you take it to them and they uh, pull it apart, see what's wrong, and then give you a quote based on what they have to replace to, to make it well again. It's just a couple seals that degrade in the fuel injection pump, and that's why it's leaking some fuel. So I don't think it's too expensive. Um, most of the cost really I think is just the labor. I don't know how long it takes them to pull it apart and put it back together. But then it needs to be retimed so that it, you know, shoots fuel accurately um, to, to the cylinders as they're needed. So Cool. So, so that, two hours? That's the project today. We'll see. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. So I'm gonna get changed and get set up. Nice. Trying to decide not really if Santa should go further up the mast or not. You know, we might have to deal with him later. Yeah. <laughs> Always something. Always something. All right, time to get to work. So this is our fuel injector pump. This is what is supplying the diesel to the three cylinders. It's a three, three cylinder diesel engine, so each one of these is a fuel supply line um, to the cylinders. This is a, a electronic fuel shutoff valve, and as you can see, we've got diesel leaking. Right now I have the fuel valves turned off, so the leak is minimized. While I was waiting for parts for the last week or two, I just had this, this cup and a couple of rags trying to catch any of the diesel that's leaking out of the pump, but the, the seals um, where these injector lines are coming out of is uh, where the where the fuel is leaking from. So this whole assembly is going to get exchanged. Um, I have a new gasket for underneath here, a new gasket for the shutoff valve, and then I'm not sure um, if it's the the fuel lift pump or not, but this is this is the fuel uh, pump that supplies fuel through the filter to the injection manifold. There's a manual primer on here, and this primer has never worked. It needs to be on a certain uh, timing of the engine, but even if I crank over the engine, it still doesn't work at all. So the pump wasn't that expensive. I'm gonna replace this. I'm hoping I can take care of that problem as well. That's a problem I've had since I've owned the boat. But the, the main goal today is to get this fuel injection pump swapped out, and then if time permits, uh, this lift pump as well. I'm always a bit nervous when I tackle boat maintenance that I've never done before, for good reason. But thanks to some great instructions from Lugger Bob, this one went really smoothly. I was able to successfully replace our fuel injection pump and our fuel lift pump without any issues and clean up my mess in just under two hours.
Success! Were you afraid the generator would never start again? Yeah. That was a little bit too. <laughs> We're all good. No leaks. It's running. Got a full load on it. I'll let it run for another 10 minutes or so and then shut her down. Less than two hours. I can go ahead and add that one to the service lock. Nice. Done. Fixed. Last day here in Seattle was a perfect day to get the kids dressed up to go to Pike Place Market. Going to the market on a Sunday morning was always one of our favorite things to do when we lived downtown. And it's only a five minute walk from Bell Harbor up the Pike Street steps. For old time's sake, we took a selfie in front of my favorite pink wall. All right guys, pink wall. Cheese. Cheese. At the top of the stairs is the one and only gum wall, located in Post Alley. It's quite the tourist attraction. What do you guys think? Super gross or super cool? What also makes Seattle great is all the live street music that's back in full force. The market was busy, people were happy, the produce was abundant, the skirts were short. The egg rolls still get a thumbs up. The sesame balls were still the best thing I've ever eaten. The famous pigs were decorated and the fish was a flying. On our way out, we even got to chat with some friendly Washington State troopers who let Sean check out their wheels. Bye guys. Dude, you got on a state patrol bike. Yeah. How cool is that? I want to take it for a ride. I, they probably would have let you. They were about to handcuff you. <laughs> <laughs> That's our tax dollars. Yeah. It's nice that we get to enjoy them. Yeah. To sit on them. That wraps up the market trip. What, a, what an awesome way to end the market. We're just going to go down harbor steps and head back to the boat and get back to life. Our weekend getaway to the heart of Seattle's waterfront was a nice change of scenery, even being so close to our home port. It was also nice to see the market alive and well again after a rough couple of years. back home we spotted something very large and shiny floating at the surface so we circled around to confirm what we feared that this was a deceased sea lion floating at the surface in Elliott Bay. Back in 2018 Elliott Bay was ground zero for sea lion shootings by commercial and recreational fishermen who were upset that the sea lions were eating the local salmon. I really hope this sea lion died of natural causes but regardless seeing this big creature dead in the water was heartbreaking. 
after reporting this to the Coast Guard and the West Coast Marine Mammal Stranding Network so they could investigate and at least remove the body from the water to avoid a collision with another vessel, we were on our way back to where the weekend began. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the ride, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll never miss a video like our upcoming adventure where we hit up eight new places in 14 days. We'll see you next time.